Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, well, thank you both so much. I want to thank Senator Lyons for bringing uh, your work uh, to my attention, as well as I want to thank the two of you for inviting me. And I think you're open to any senator uh, coming uh, this evening. Unfortunately, I cannot. So we thought uh, that perhaps what we would do is have the two of you in today to talk a little bit about this incredible project that uh, you have planned and a little bit of history about the project, as well as uh, you know, we wanna share with you, and I think you know that we're also looking at a bill, a piece of legislation that is connected to, to, to the work that you're doing. So the floor is yours. Welcome to Senate Education. All we ask is that you just introduce yourselves, uh, say maybe what town you're from, and then uh, go from there. Okay, so I don't have a um, like presentation written out today just because I have been so insanely busy with everything that's happening, but um, thank you for having me. I'm Eliza Doucette. I am a student of Mount Dave. I'm from South Stokesboro. I am okay. Emma Doucette. Uh, she is my twin sister, so we have the same information. Great. So, so, so go ahead. Our event starts at six o'clock tonight, and it, it is in Bristol's Holly Hall. We will go over an educational presentation um, because I believe that not enough people have a clear understanding on the Holocaust and what truly happened, which I think another point that the bill will hopefully help. Um, and then following that, then we will move outside across the street to the Bristol Town Green, where we have a couple of speakers. And then, then there will be uh, some readings and a candlelight vigil, candlelighting and vigil. Wonderful. How did you become interested in doing this? Um, so, well, I'm not Jewish. We have seen anti-Semitism in our community, and it, I think that a lot of people don't address it, or they say that it's an older issue, that it's not a problem anymore. In reality, Jews are the most are the oldest oppressed group in history, mm -hmm. and anti-Semitism is at the highest it's been um, since the late 1900s. And are you talking, when you talk about anti-Semitism with those numbers across throughout the world, or right now, are you thinking right in the, in the United US. States? In the US, okay. The US, um, yeah, so anti-Semitism is more prevalent than ever, and it, it needs to be addressed. So because we don't trust that our school will teach people enough about it, and that our community is educated enough, then we had to take it into our own hands, and it, we began to plan this event as a way to address it, because I think that the first step to fighting heat and its bias is education. And I think that that brings us to this bill, um, S-189. Mm -hmm. um, so we believe that it must be passed because education, as Liza said, is essential to fighting hate and ensuring that the Holocaust can never happen again. I see anti-Semitism around me pretty much every day. And simultaneously, I'm told that anti-Semitism doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. And so, or that it wasn't real to begin with. And if students know about the Holocaust, they'll be less likely to harass people. And will grow up as more responsible citizens. Uh, by learning from the past that we can protect the present and the future. And as global citizens, it is our responsibility to educate ourselves in our community. Terrific. Uh, um, before we open it up for questions, I'm wondering if you would say a few words about, um, well, first of all, what grade are you both in? We are sophomores, we're in 10th okay. grade. Okay, so you're in 10th grade. And um, you've learned about the Holocaust through your family uh, and perhaps, you know, through, through extended family. But what about 
the formal education of the Holocaust? Has it been brought up uh, in school? I mean, how is it being taught? Is it something you would have like if you uh, if it wasn't something that your family talked about? Were there opportunities? Do you think when you may have learned about it, or or has it been? No. I am from a very open family, and in my family, we've talked about these issues from a very young age, and I've been around them. But I think that growing up and it going in the public school system, we never talked about it. And it even at the small private school that I went to from fourth grade, sorry, from fifth grade to eighth grade, it wasn't talked about very often. At Mount Abe, now that I'm at Mount Abe, we spent about a week on the Holocaust and we did talk about it. And it yet I found myself shocked at, at the way that my teacher believed that he was doing something so special by teaching the Holocaust. It should be normal and expected that they teach the Holocaust, not something that my teacher thinks that he is amazing for doing because that is the bare minimum. And it, it also shocked me how he continued to make Holocaust comparisons and genuinely generally didn't seem as educated as he could have been on the topic. And it, I think that proves that if a history teacher can still not necessarily know what he needs to, to be able to effectively teach a body of students, that's just proving that we need change. Mm -hmm. I think throughout elementary school, my teachers would always ask me about Hanukkah, come in and Tell us about Hanukkah, light a menorah for us, uh, show us the food. But it was always, uh, it was like they were, it was like people were taking advantage of my Judaism and it, uh, never teaching the real history. Hmm. The real history is ugly. It doesn't make a nice story in a classroom, but it's essential. I think that in this society, we do sometimes talk about having these uncomfortable conversations, but we don't often have them. And it, the Holocaust is something that must be talked about it about because 11 million people died. 11 million people with families and its futures just gone, an entire culture decimated. And it, you know, it's not pretty. It is not fun history. It is uncomfortable to talk about. It is painful. And if that is exactly the reason that we need to be educated on it. Thank you both. Questions, Senator Lyons, please. Well, first, I want to say thank you to Eliza for sending the email in the first place. And you have a good friend to help you. Uh, yeah. And just a couple questions and then a comment. But are you still having your um, vigil? today in Bristol? Yes. So it's yes. at six o'clock? Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry, I cannot be there. Oh, that's would, all right. And I, I know that you two are putting together something that is going to be very meaningful for mm -hmm. your friends, your families, and for your community. So I, I have to say how very proud I am of the work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm thrilled that you reached out about this. Well, thank you. Uh, so uh, and I, I completely would agree with you about the, the very seriousness and the emotional um, involvement that we all have when we think about the Holocaust. And I don't know if you two have had the experience of going to Washington, D.C. to the Holocaust Museum. Have you done that yet? No, we have not. We really want to. Yeah. You know, that's actually an interesting comment to say. On our school trip, we went to a lot of important historical museums, but the Holocaust Museum was never talked about when we went. I believe it, it, was, it was mentioned once after a long day among other museums as an option, but it did not happen and it was not in our plan. Just a quick note, sorry about the shifting lighting. My dog <laughs> is playing with the curtains behind me. So. Oh, we okay. like that. We like dogs. Yeah, we like dogs. Uh, you. you know, I just I, I do hope that one day you'll be able to get there. It is one of the most powerful things that I've ever done. And I was able to go when there were very few people at the museum and just having the experience of going in 
the museum. I, I won't spoil it for you, but it is a very, very powerful day. So you need to take some time. And I just, um, just thank you for what you're doing. It isn't a matter of raising the Holocaust above other historical events, but it's making it equal with those things that are so powerful in our history. So thank that's, you. That's thank you for your work. Statement. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I, I just, I'll share with you, um, perhaps, I don't know, have you read um, Night Train or any of Elie Wiesel's? Yeah. Books? Yeah, yes, we have. those are those are powerful also, and they're very powerful. They truly yeah. are. I was so fortunate to meet and visit with Ellie Wiesel and over uh, lunch and dinner when he came to visit our college. So I I'm glad you're reading his books because they they show what's happened to people at a very personal level. So yeah. when we talk, yeah, yeah. You it got. definitely has, it definitely changes your perspective on things. Yeah. Powerful, yeah. Thank you and have fun tonight. Uh, is that fun? <laughs> that is fun. It really is. It's, it's fulfilling what you're doing. Have a, I, I hope that you really feel rewarded by what you're doing today. Thank you, yeah. Thanks. It will be good to see it all come together. Other questions <clears throat> or comments? for Eliza or Emma. Is there anything that uh, Center Lines comment about uh, having read Night, um, is there anything in particular that the two of you would recommend to people your age or any age that has, uh, that you've read or experienced through reading or visually that has really brought the Holocaust uh, to a very you know personal and and sort of transformative level. Right. Um. So while I was working on getting everything together for this event, it, then somebody sent over the link to this website. It's, I forget. I think it's connected to maybe the Holocaust Museum or something. I can't remember to be honest exactly. And it, there was this list of biographies of just like hundreds of different at Holocaust. It, survivors and victims of all ages. You know, there was talk of kids younger than I was who were gassed. And at that, for me, it just sent shivers down my spine and it really hit me hard. And then I would also say a couple of years ago, I read a lesser known book called I Will Plant Your Lilac Tree. And it, it's a memoir that talks about a girl who basically was unknowingly chose to go into concentration camps to be with her family. and it, I think that that really affected me because it graphically describes the horrors of the Holocaust. I think there's also a book, I'm blinking on what it's called. Um, it's Liza, it's from the author. I'm not sure. Yet. Okay. Um, there's also a book I read, unfortunately, I cannot remember what it's called, but uh, um, it shows um, a boy who went through, um, traveled through 10 different concentration camps um, and survived the only one of his family. Well, as you're, if, if you happen to remember, please share that with us. Uh, yeah. And anything else that you think we should know that we may not have covered today and you're not thinking about, but you may think of this evening uh, during the service or another day, please, please keep in touch with us. Uh, and we really appreciate, as Senator Lyons, I know I'm speaking for all of us, we're all very proud of you and you. grateful for what you're doing and look forward to keeping in touch as we make our way through this bill. Yeah, for sure. Oh, and thank you. You have my email, so you, you are welcome to reach out at any time. Yeah. Thank Great. you for having us. Thank you for letting us speak today. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. Have a nice evening. Have a good evening. Thank, thank you. you. Take too. care. You too.